ToonGrin.com. You know, a funny coincidence happened to me this week. <coughs> the exact moment I started writing this review for Osmosis Jones, I get sick. Screw coincidences. So, let's get on to Osmosis Jones. Osmosis has been on my to spotlight list for a while, and as a kid, I liked the movie a lot. But, I only really remembered more of the great art design of the TV spin-off, Ozzy and Drifts, more than what the actual movie itself was about. So, I had to ask myself, does Osmosis Jones hold up after all these years, or is it just sick? Well, I can safely say that my thoughts for the movie have completely stayed the same for all these years, except with a few added bits of frustrations thanks to my new mature mind and point of view. But we'll get to that soon enough. Osmosis Jones, played by everybody's favorite Chris Rock, is a hot-headed white blood cell on the FPD, aka the Frank Police Department, and he's part of internal police force for the body of the surprisingly uncharming and repulsive Bill Murray, playing this time the incredible role of Frank. One day an evil killer virus named Thorax, played by the cool Lawrence Fishburne, enters Frank's body after Frank quite intelligently eats an egg that a monkey sucked on and begins his fatal plans for Frank. None the wiser, Jones disappears, put him on the case to investigate the minor irritation that Thrax is causing. But being an animated cop comedy, it wouldn't be complete without Ozzy getting a quirky partner, a cold pill named Drix, played by David Hyde Pierce. Through their seemingly mismatched personas, the two investigate Thrax's attacks on the body of Frank and take aim to take him down. Osmosis Jones has one major problem and one tiny problem. The tiny one is that during the first 30 minutes of the movie, Chris Rock sounds and acts about as funny as a root canal. Focusing a lot on being loud, spewing one-liners and making himself seem like an insufferable dipstick. After Ozzy gets tricks and begins his investigation, we get to see more of Ozzy's weaker and more human side. It's a balance of ego and weakness that makes Jones in the later half of the movie much more relatable and in turn funny to the audience, unlike in the first 30 minutes where he just sounds like every cop who plays by his own rules. Oh, I'm sorry, I mean plays by his own rules, quirky laughing, <laughs> However, the first third of Osmosis Jones does a great job of setting up the world of Frank's body, showing how it works through on-screen actions for the setting rather than expositional dialogue. But this pro for the movie leads directly to its con. Because it focuses on world building so much, the body of Frank is an awesome place to explore. Seeing all the sights and settings, it's freaking amazing. However, this level of world makes the real world an almost painful place to visit as it's filled with uninteresting and unfunny twats. And the king of the twats in Osmosis Jones is Frank himself! I would like to congratulate the writing and makeup department. I'm sure they had to spend weeks making Bill look and sound like that he's practically dying throughout the entire flick. It isn't just how he looks though, everything about Frank is putrid and makes him seem like he should be living in a cave. My favorite instance of this was firstly when he eats the egg a monkey was sucking on, which gives birth to Thrax by the way. And when he blows off his daughter's field trip, he never explains to her that he can't go, not only because he's a lazy sack of poo, but her teacher has a restraining order against him. Half the content in the real world segments could have been cut out if he just said this one fact to her. And you know, restraining orders make Frank seem all the more quirky, doesn't it? 
I racked my brain trying to figure out why Bill Murray was characterized in such a putrid character, and then I remembered something from Ozzy and Drix that mirrors in this movie. The aging character of the body, Frank in the movie and Hector in the show, directly refers to the mayors in each body. In the show, we have Mayor Spryman, a completely immature and glory hounding teenager, and in the movie, we have Mayor Fleming, played by William Shatner. Because of course it is. A self-absorbed and lazy politician, with his only interest being keeping Frank as fat and disgusting as possible. In that sense, it makes Shatner and Murray's characters kind of synonymous with one another, and it makes sense they are so disgusting as they are Ozzy and Drix's secondary antagonist next to Thrax. So if I were the story editor for Osmosis students, I would ask that Frank's disgustingness be toned down in the real world segments to a more realistic state. But the concept of the mayor and Frank actually works great. Thrax, on the other hand, was a great concept that was executed just as greatly. Created to be the physical representation of the Red Death, Thrax is cold and calculative, and his red character design is bold and memorable, even if he stole the coating glasses from the Matrix. What I also like is how Thrax kills the other cells in Frank's body. If Dunn was actual humans, Osmosis Jones would be classified as an R-rated slasher. Cells get slashed and exploded by Thrax's glowing infected claw, and it's always a visual treat to see. Bottom line, Thrax is pretty damn cool. And the last thing that we must comment on, and we can't forget, we have the duo, Ozzy and Drix, and how they get along. As I said, the first 30 movie really struggles to give itself an identity, other than being another quirky cop movie with the beat cap and the pro, resulting in really cringeworthy dialogue. However, when Ozzy shows his weaker side, so does Drix, and these two cops form a true partner-partner relationship that is actually enjoyable to watch. I don't feel it's as strong as it could have been, the weaker half being Drix, who comes off rather bland in the entire movie compared to Ozzy. But for the purposes of the movie, he works. Maybe if they cut down the live action mix, Drix would have been able to show a more colorful personality. But he is cherry flavored, which is always a plus for me. Osmosis Jones is a rickety movie. It's funny here, touching there, as well as annoying here and frustrating there. Along with the beautiful animation, what we get is a really beautiful birthday present of a movie wrapped in beautiful velvet. But once you open it, all you get is a bus station sandwich. It's not a terrible sandwich, mind, but you wish the lettuce was a little bit fresher and they didn't put in that egg that monkey sucked on. So speaking from a recommendation point of view, I would still recommend Osmosis as just being okay. If it sounds interesting to you, then you'll like the movie. If it doesn't, or if you don't want to see Bill Murray humiliate himself, then treat this like the plague and run away.